welcome to the Curry Gumbo Podcast, where Nicole and Ashley discuss Black film, music, and television. We are super excited about the season three premiere of Atlanta, and we had a lot to say about this first episode. Let's get into it. Season three, 2022. So. Three slaps. It opens up with a white man and a black man on a boat. I'm assuming this is Lake Lanier because they keep talking about how it's haunted. Mm -hmm. I didn't know growing up. I did not know the history of Lake Lanier. I I didn't learn about it until maybe a couple years ago. What about you? Like, what what did you know about Lake Lanier growing up? um, Seeing that we both grew up in Georgia and I've been a few times. I would hear about classmates going to Lake Lanier. Mm -hmm. I don't, I remember there was, let me say this. There would never be two years that would go by without an incident happening at Lake Lanier. Never. There was always a boating accident. There was always something happening at Lake Lanier when Usher's son or stepson. Stepson, yeah. When when his stepson had that accident. And I I believe that young man passed, right? Because he He was on. Yeah. So, and I'm not even a young man. This is a little boy, you know? Yeah, he was a kid with his two parents being celebrities of course it's going to receive a little bit more attention but yeah I I have no desire uh to go to Lake Lanier I've I've never heard anything good happening as I got older and even I think more so now I'm hearing all these stories about it being haunted and I heard I did hear the story what they mentioned in the show about how it was a black town and the black town the city flooded the town and there's still remnants of the town under the water that's why it's so difficult for i guess rescuers to rescue people if they drown because there's all that it's literally a city Mm -hmm. under under the lake and so i learned i learned all this recently but back when i was living in atlanta like in my teens and my 20s i had no fear i did not know that there was a town under Lake Lanier. The show is the first time I'm hearing about that. Oh, I don't really? think that they, it was the first time. I don't think that I, I've, I don't think that they named the show Oscarville, Georgia. That's what I'm reading, that that was the name of the town, predominantly Black town. The show introduced me to that information. Okay. I'm very I've thankful heard other for people that. Talk about it. I've heard other people talk about it um, before the show. I was just like, and I bet there's a, there's a place like that in every major city in every state. I think, you know, what Central Park was a black. Yeah. I I think like Seneca village, which was turned into Central Park, Oscarville, Georgia, which was turned into Lake Lanier. It's interesting that these places are turned into places of retreat, places of like fun, nature, you know, nature. Yeah. Like a natural dwelling like this isn't like when there's nothing natural about it first of all when I saw those two men on that boat at night I don't doubt that people fish in the evening you know that's mm-hmm. not a part of my ministry so I ain't got nothing to do with that but I whenever fish, I don't fish at all when mm-hmm. I whenever I see a black person alone with, with a, white guy. a white person or a group of white people. I am in, especially in film, I immediately think you are in danger. First of all, I feel really uncomfortable when white people explain like race and racism to black people and, he was and, knowing and, all the history. and black and history. Like, okay. It just made, it made me feel very uncomfortable and it made me feel like, ugh. like, I don't like when people, when white people like tell me like, Oh, did you know that Elvis didn't invent his famous dance? It was actually a, a black singer who did it, and they'll give me the like name and the dates, and I'm like, I'm like, like, how do you know that? I was out niggered. <laughs> <laughs> I will never be out niggered again. Yes. Yeah, so did I you feel about um the white guy explaining there's no such thing as whiteness that people anyone can become white. Do you agree? Well, I agree from the standpoint of like race is is a construct. Like if you broke down, like if you took, if you mapped out people's like bodies and genes and DNA and all that stuff, like there's not going to, like I, I might have more in common with a Korean woman than I do with you, you know? So I definitely, I, I definitely understand race as a social construct. 
And so whiteness being a fake thing and whiteness being something that is, um, that people constantly can. has to be maintained. So I, you or know. that anyone can, because I, the way I took it is, if you look throughout history, there are people who are white now that weren't white back in the day. Italians. Yes. Jewish people. Mm -hmm. All Eastern Europeans, really. For sure. They weren't white. Now, all of a sudden, they're white. And now mm -hmm. even some Hispanic people, like there's, especially living in Florida, you Girl, can tell the white I Hispanic. No, you um, going. <laughs> and it, no, but the thing is like, you don't even know. It's that, now that code switch, that's on another level because you don't, e you don't even know they, if they white or his, or like, cause they, they will come to work and be like, their name is Emma. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, oh, hey, hey, Emma, you send Emma me an email like, hey, what's Emma's real name? Emilia Rodriguez, mm -hmm. like what? Emma Spanish? I thought she was mm -hmm. white. Like mm -hmm. this whole like you just you really don't know. Come on, Veronica and, Vega. <laughs> but she it's, it's but she like, black though. Like she said she black. She said she black. But um, and even yeah. like they have like white people for like the was it Cubans for Trump? It's like they oh. they are white in terms of status, in terms of wealth, in terms of social mobility. There are people of color who can line up real close to yeah. whiteness. I think that it will never be attained, nor do I want to, like, I, I don't, I, you know, I'm not someone who is like fiending for whiteness, but I think that but, there's always a nigga wake up call shot, you know, courtesy of, you know, that language is courtesy of Paul Mooney, but, you know, you have OJ talking about, I'm not black, I'm OJ. I'm OJ, yeah. Baby, you black. And the world will show you that you are black. You know, you ain't but, white. I don't know. Maybe you right. ain't black, but you ain't white. Also, outside, if you go outside of the United States, I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos of people who moved to Ghana. The Ghanaians have this word, Obruni, which means like white people. Mm -hmm. But they call it to like anyone, like Americans, black Europeans who are even like lighter skinned or just foreigners it kind of symbolizes your your foreigner you're probably more likely have some type of wealth if you're an american and you're just coming to ghana for a vacation if you're able to vacation mm -hmm. in africa you yeah. know you're even though you're black you're not ghanaian and then you have lighter skin so it's like you have this 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 whiteness like this the concept of whiteness meaning you're wealthy you're foreign you can you can travel for leisure and come and go and this mm -hmm. It's like a status thing where it's something that kind of is like it can't, it's something that you can attain in a way. Like, no, you're not white. But to them, it's like, yeah, you're, you're, you ain't us. So you're white. Yeah. And I, but I also think that if they put um, Lady Gaga right next to me, they would understand that I'm not her. <laughs> you want to move to Ghana? I don't, I've been, I don't know. I don't know if I could. I know you want to get the fuck out of here. That's what I know. So we didn't even right. get into the, what this episode was about. Okay. One, I knew you wasn't safe from, from jump. Two, when it just started getting so dark. I don't know if you're mm -hmm. a Game of Thrones girl, but it's that episode where they have the, the, the war with the Night King. And I'm telling you, like, they made that episode so dark. I had to... I was like, is it my TV? Like, what, what is going on? I can't see shit. So when it got dark, you could see the lights from the bridges just fading out. I already knew, like, oh, he's done for. Like, the lights are literally going out on him. He's done. So you have that. So I'm, I have to immediately think about the man on the boat. How does that story relate to this young man? Well, the same thing happened to him. His class was going to go see Black Panther 2, and he was dancing on the desk, and they call his mom, and his mom and grandfather come to the school, and you can tell she's tired. She's like, why are you calling me? Because he was dancing, like, put him in detention. Like, what, what am I here for? And then the other teacher, I guess the guidance counselor comes in and says, suggests that maybe he needs to go to remedial classes. Yeah. Can we, can we stay on him celebrating yes. for a little bit? So even before the, the teacher announces that 
they're about to go see Black Panther. He's waking up from, from being asleep and a mm. white boy is recording him on his phone. Mm. Now I'm assuming that if you are turned around and you're recording me, you are not paying attention to what is happening in the classroom. Mm -mm. And yet the teacher says nothing about this. You don't hear the teacher say anything, but you are getting upset because this black boy is dancing and you are, you, you have sent him to the principal's office. I understand that when you told him to sit down, he didn't sit down. I understand that. What was the real offense here? Nothing. And you know what I'm saying? It's like, that was a waste of time. Even the Atlanta Falcons and Dominoes, like, sponsoring this event for for what racial awareness type stuff y'all taking them to see a fucking movie but you have these like racist practices happening in the school maybe y'all should take some of that money and do a thorough investigation of what the fuck is happening in these public institutions so it it was all of that like you're you maybe you're not thinking about that on a literal level even on a subconscious level you know, like, this is fucking ridiculous. Like, this is stupid, you know? But, okay, like, let, let them go see a movie. Cool. So then we get to, was she a principal or, or an administrator? I don't know. But, Which one, um, the black lady or the white lady? The black lady. I think she was the principal. I think he went to the principal's office. So you have this white woman standing up behind this high-level administrator if she's the principal, it's really sad because she isn't even able to speak. And she's saying, oh, excuse me. Oh, uh, uh, let me, let me handle this. Baby, I'm the principal or baby, I'm the administrator. You're just the fucking guidance counselor. You're not with him all the time. Sit your ass down. You take a fucking back seat. It's black people being disrespected over and over and over and over. And I'm like, I, this is so fucking heavy. There better be some comedy. There better be something else to like get me up out of here because I cannot take this shit. So his mother, his mother is upset that she's called to the school for him dancing. She's like, what do you want me to do? Like give him attention if he's disrupting the class. Like, what do you, what do you want me to do? And so she's kind of disciplining him in the hallway saying, okay, you want to dance? Okay, dance. Whip and nay nay, do all, do all the dances. And then the grandfather gives him the three slaps. And then the they mother were says some pitiful slaps too. Like they, they could oh, yeah. have been worse, but I I mean, I guess I guess the point was it was you can't say there was no abuse. So for them to take him out out the house for the guidance counselor to call the child services, it really she had no business because there was no zero abuse. I find it hard to believe that a black parent would do that in, in front of those white people like that, especially since the mother is so aware the racism. Well, she that said happens. these white people are going to kill yeah. you. That was the so thing. So if you know that white people have these sadistic aims, then why would you allow for your father to, to, physically disciplined i'm going to call it abuse because i don't believe it like why would you allow him to slap your son in front of them white people if you know what white people about that didn't th things like that don't make sense to me they were they were weak slaps That's they were I'm weak slaps but this is a this is a young man who has been True. taken to the principal's office for dancing so if he's taken to the principal office for dancing, what you think they're going to think of you slapping this boy? But Girl. again, I'm going to leave it alone. So the guidance counselor says, don't worry, son, I'll, I'll get you out of there when he's escorted back to the classroom. So at home, Child Protective Services comes to the door and the mother is like, She's yelling at her son saying, oh, did you call the police on me? And he's like, no, like, no, I'm not, I didn't call the police. And then... And hey, y'all um, see how the police is with that Asian caseworker. When they go to that black house, the police is with her. And now with the... Keep that in mind. One. Okay. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Uh, I guess they felt like the, the black mom is more violent. They're going to need some backup. I mean, hmm. But this is the part where I think I agree with you when 
So the mother was like, oh, y'all want him? Take him, take him, take him. She grabbed his stuff, put him in the trash bag. It was like, okay, you, you want to call the police on me? Y'all want to take him? Go ahead. Here, here he is. Take him. Now that I was like, no, no, ma'am. That don't happen. I, you know, and I, when I remember when I was having a conversation on Facebook about Black men who only date lighter skin black women or lighter skin women of color mm -hmm. i had a few black male friends come at me like that shit don't happen what like that <laughs> that don't and i'm like here i'm it's i'm showing you like the, the the statuses of these black men who or like i think it was like comments on pictures you know of people saying like yeah i only date them if they look like mixed or something you know and i'm like this this is literally happening and this is something that is not necessarily typical because i think the 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 research shows that most black men date, date black women black women or marry black women right but i don't know if the research shows if they the typically complexion. date darker complexion you know so i feel like i am telling you like what i hear i am telling you my experience. I am telling you what I see. So a part of me feels like I shouldn't be quick to say, ain't no black mama doing that shit. I know my black mama didn't, I but it don't feel before. natural. It just don't feel right. So, okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll give it, I'll say this. I've heard this joke before where black women being like, oh, if you call the police, they gonna come, they get me, they gonna get you. So think about if you call the police, because I'm going to be in my house and you're going to be gone. Mm -hmm. So I've heard that that joke before, mm -hmm. being like, call the police if you want to. They're going to take you away. I'm going to be in my house. You're going to be away. So I get that part. But because you mentioned this was a dream sequence, and then when we get to the end, I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking, okay, maybe that this was the point. Like, because I don't want to skip to the end right now, but um, what she says when she sees Laquavius again, like nothing happened. Yeah. So it's like, how much time passed? You know, it's, it's really, I had a, one of my mentors, I love him so much, Stacy Boyd. He would talk about his experiences as a, as a young black boy. And he would say, I had no soft place to land. It was mm -hmm. hard at school and it was hard at home. Hard at home. This kid is not safe anywhere. He's not yeah. safe at school. He gets, he gets reprimanded for celebrating. He, you know, when he's asleep in class, there's a kid taunting him because of that. His parents come. And she's just like, give him detention, as opposed to you're, you're saying that my son needs to be in remedial classes, but perhaps he's more advanced. Maybe he needs to be, maybe he needs to move up a grade. Maybe he's bored, but she's fine with just letting him have detention. He gets slapped by the grandpa. When the police, when he's at home and she, you better not be watching that TV. There's never any emotional caressing there's never any is a fine line he has to walk you know and it's just difficult to watch this and I know that we're condensing a life yeah. to a few moments here I understand that but I think what it's what it's showing us is like this kid has it it's difficult for him even though he's an able-bodied boy even though he lives in a home, even though, you know, he's not experiencing hunger. Like they seem to be doing all right financially. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they don't seem rich, like rich people. No, but they, they look like right. middle income. We straight. You know what I'm saying? Um, now I wasn't mad at the TV and go get some spaghetti in the fridge because I've definitely been like this food in the fridge. I'm not cooking nothing today. But he was asking and for milk. I don't understand. With the spaghetti? No, he was like, mom, do we have any milk? There's spaghetti in there if you're hungry. And I was like, he just wanted milk. Well, did he, maybe he wanted to dip like some cookies and milk. I don't know. 
you know, but maybe it was like, what you want with that milk boy? Eat that spaghetti. You need to eat. You know what I'm saying? Like it could have, it could have been that. Um, and I hope it was almond milk because y'all know that cow milk ain't good for us anyway, as I eat like Shake Shack, literally Mm -hmm. that mama was pissing me off. I want to fight her. I want to fight her so bad. And he did a good job because I was like, why he got that ice sitting on top of that, that cattle box? I didn't get that part. What what is that for? Because you know, if you, if you tell your kid not to watch the TV, if it's hot, you know, they've been watching that TV. So he was like, let me put this ice up. I said, this boy is genius. He's smart. He's smart. And he really is genius as we see at the end of the episode, but let's go. So child protective services take him away from his mama's house. And they sent him to these this house with these two white women who only adopt black kids. Or apparently they they have three other adopted black children in the home. And let's just get it out the way. They are meant to represent the the heart women. I didn't know about the heart story. I missed that. I didn't know it was so recent. So he's in this house. The first thing he notices is it stinks in here. They show him to his room. He's sharing a room with all four kids. The house is pretty big. Like, how many bedrooms is in that house? The house is pretty big, but you can tell it needs some repair. You know what I'm saying? But why are all the kids in one room? And I know that as a, if you're um, an adopted parent, you don't have to have a bedroom for every child. I'm like four in one room. I would think that you would have to have a bedroom for the different genders. That's what I would assume. Uh, But I also think that they were just not allowed to follow the rules because they were two unassuming white women. True. So anyway, these women, they don't have a washcloth. No, girl! And you know what? They mentioned that in this episode a couple times about the washcloth. And I'm just like... We talked about white oh. friends. I got to be like, do y'all for real? Come on, <laughs> talk to me. I don't even trust people who like. Oh, I have this loofah because I'm like, how are we? How? What? What you mean the loofah? What? If I, I have a loofah, I have I have both. I have a cloth I, and a, you have both. Yes, like first I got the loofah for like the exfoliating process. Yes, and then and then you, I have then a washcloth wash. to wash a cloth. Like you have, it's not one or the other. It's both. Yes. So anyway, there's no washcloth. They cook and fry chicken in the microwave. Not a bit of seasoning. And and she got the first of all, she picking up. She I'm like, what, what 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 she dipped the chicken in the flour um bag. Bag. Like, Just even contamination. Contamination. You know she didn't rinse that chicken. I don't care what the fuck Dr. I said. Dr. I said, you don't need to oh, wash no, the chicken no. because it's no, going no. to spread bacteria. Nigga, no, no, no. We know how to do no. washing. Listen, we have, we have, we know how to do it. You put it in a separate container and then you wash it in there. You what don't do they think we're doing? Like taking the drumstick, throwing it under the water, and then taking it, like spinning it around our head. Spinning around like, like a it's helicopter. A shirt. Like, no. They not, we're not doing that. What y'all think we doing? That, oh my who, goodness. What are the statistics of black folk dying because of chicken bacteria because we washing chicken? What what is it? Shut up, Dr. Oz. Go ahead. And then they had like they had one piece of chicken each, a couple slices of avocado and some capers. Girl, do that even go? No. Avocado and capers? Mexico yeah. and, and Italy, them, 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 they don't connect on the thing. They don't even come together. They ain't together on the map and the globe. So why are we putting them together on the plate? But With okay. some unfried chicken. Unfried microwave. Chicken. Chicken. Pink as I don't know what. <sighs> pink like Pink Friday album cover. He's very and vocal. So- He's very yeah. vocal in a way that he wasn't at his mom's house. He, well, you know, can't be vocal in black, in black people's house. Um, the other children... They were quiet. ...are very quiet. Shout out to their acting because they said nothing. And I knew what they were thinking the entire time. Those baby dolls was acting their asses off. Shout out to them. I knew Gail was dangerous. The moment she came in, 
And he mm-hmm. said, am I supposed to call both of you mom? Call me Gail. Like, no, Gail. So the moms, they have a stand at the farmer's market where they sell kombucha. Girl. And all the kids are working. They have this sign that has, Aquarius has a sign that says free hugs. The sad part is when I looked up the Hart family, that part was real. Like they mm-hmm. was really at the farmer's market with a sign that said free hugs. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, damn. And then they show the part where the Cravius sees a police officer and he runs and grabs a police officer and starts crying. And it gets, um, there's a picture taken that comes in national news. In real life, the real boy, his name was um, Devante, and it went viral. The photo went viral of him hugging and crying to police officer. But then, of course, because these are two white women, the police officer's like, oh, go, go back to your, to your family. And this is the problem. Because we both know that if this was a white girl, a white boy, with a black family there would have been an investigation Mm -hmm. y'all don't know danger when you see it when it is presented to you this kid is in danger i know that the black caseworker know that you know that everybody know that but you don't don't know that you don't see it but you go to a you go to a pool party because some white people done called the police because these kids at the pool party and you drawing guns on kids and you sitting on little black girls because you you feel like your life is in danger. These are the things, like this is why I am uncomfortable with some people being around black children. You don't sense the fucking danger. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all people? But anyway, so yeah. He got the sign that says free hugs and a white man walks up to him and say, oh, it's hugs your father? Because he's thinking, he says like free I didn't hugs get that. as in hugs is a person yeah, in, jail. in jail. Like free him again. Oh, wow. But these be the type of people who it's, it's that it's that I'm dying to be woke. So this episode, it, it gets into, I guess, a retelling of the story of the Hart family. Mm-hmm who they ended up murders, this murder-suicide thing where they drove off, where they drove drive off a cliff in real life mm-hmm. or something. In this retelling, all of the kids are in the car and they're driving, I guess, to the Grand Canyon. That's what they say. But um, all the kids are in, the, are in the back of a van. Well, we skipped over the caseworker. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, a neighbor, that, yeah. When they was in the, the other part of the story was they was in the backyard and all the kids Girl. was doing, doing the uh, gardening. Slaves. The gardening. Slaves. And the mom's just looking at them, okay. Sing a, song. Sing a song. while you work. Okay. But then the black caseworkers come to the house because the neighbor called and she knows. Immediately. This, this ain't right. She references everything that Laquavius did that Laquarius references so what what's is that smell? smell Laquarius notices the the uh, Fatima coughing she also notices uh Fatima coughing they trying to sue this girl with fucking blueberries bitch what and she she says do you have a washcloth no we don't have a washcloth Laquarius tells her that you know he's hungry she's like I'm gonna get you out of here and mm-hmm. You're thinking, oh my God, yes, like he's, he is saved. You know what I'm saying? But it's difficult. But them white women, they hurry up and get, they, they get in the, they get out of there before they, before anyone can come back. And I'm assuming that they kill her. The I'm assuming, worker? I'm ass- what, what happens to the caseworker? What happens to the caseworker? And this is what I be talking about with the way they do black women darker skinned black woman because van be getting fully fleshed the fuck out stories but this caseworker this black mama like it i'm like come the fuck on here so this black woman fucking dies 
and we don't ever get any type of storyline about her like she's completely fucking disposable and she was the one who was going to save them fucking kids this is why i don't be trusting like some black like this is the same shit would get out where was that black girl story but okay oh yeah true i'm pissed off and i ain't got time for it go ahead though i'm sorry i ain't gonna say no more i was saying to close up the story so the the, the moms and the kids they well the moms have this plan to drive to the grand canyon as they say but they're on this they're gonna drive off um they're gonna kill themselves and the kids they're saying because this world isn't safe for them or the kids to being lesbians and being black black babies but okay and they know they've been found out the neighbor doesn't oh, yeah. trust them the na- and the neighbor has called the cop the neighbor has called for child protective services that black woman comes there unattended by the police had the police been there nothing would have happened they would have immediately taken those kids out of there or maybe not exactly. but they would have done it they would have they would have done an invest another investigation but that black woman would still be alive right and so gail kills this woman Gail oh, fucking yeah. kills this woman. Laquarius dreams of this woman's head in the in the in the kitchen Being a in, dog, in the yeah. in the refrigerator. As the mom is driving, well, they're driving, they're crashing into Lake Lanier, which goes back to the beginning of this of this episode. Being in Lake Lanier, and Laquarius, he he jumps out the back of the uh, back of the van. He's safe. The kids are safe because they're found. And the two white women, I guess, are gone. And then the Aquarius goes back home. He walks he back kids, home. He leave his sisters and brothers. I was like, man, take them with you now. Take he walks back you. home, walks in his house, washing dishes. And his mom was like, oh, so you decided to come back home now? And it's like, that's... but so at this point, I'm thinking, okay, this is obviously not, it's supposed to be a, I guess, a, a dream. Who's because dream? I don't know, but just the point of the mother didn't feel like there was any, like her son was missing or she didn't know where her son was or what happened. It just seemed like he left, like, it was seemed like it just, he left, went outside and played and came back home. Like it just, so I'm like, okay, this, this isn't right. So this, this is something is more to this. It's not supposed to be real Mm -hmm. because it's not, it's not real. No, like your son is missing, taken from your house, and you're just like, oh, you're back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's constantly a dream within a dream within a dream, you know. Uh, and so you wonder because you don't see any of the main characters from Atlanta in this episode. No. So you wonder, like, how does this story relate to the story of Earn or Paperboy or Darius or Van? Like, what what is this about? Like, why are we here? This you know? kind of reminds me of whether any of the characters in the FUBU episode. They were in the FUBU episode because it was like a young urn, a young oh, paper okay. boy. So I kind of equate this to a Teddy Perkins episode. So they were in the episode, but this was really about Teddy Perkins. Yeah. You know, it, it was really, and, and also Darius. So not quite so much, but. I was thinking about Jordan Peele and Donald Glover and how they portray white people. No, like it's interesting how they have these horrific white people stories, but then they're very connected to white people. Like they both have white wives. Jordan does, Peele has a I, white mother. And it's like, well, does white, Donald Glover like, has a white wife? I thought she was Asian. Is she, okay, well, she's not black. Exactly. What? What is she? Because you're the second person to say that. So maybe I'm wrong. She could be half white, half Asian. I don't know, but she's not black. But go ahead. What would you like to say about them being connected? Well, to because they have people? all these. They have. They tell these horrific, you know, white people stories. Mm-hmm. But then for them being so close to to white people, it's like, well, damn. Like, is are you okay? Like, are you okay? <laughs> are you in danger? Blink twice, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> Oh goodness, I don't know. I you know, I like why do you feel the need to That's like, why it feels it feels tell this on story. The, like, if I were to be really critical, to me it feels like race baiting. Like you don't really believe this shit cuz at the end of the day like you you love these white people, you marrying them. So 
and but that that's me being super critical and like you just doing this to gain fandom you just doing this to get black people on your side you just doing this to get black people to to, appease the black audience yeah like that that's the only reason you're you're doing this but that's me being really critical that's me being super duper 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 critical if i it like me ashley right now i just think they have probably been in spaces where they've been the only black person yeah it has to be more than that because atlanta is a it's a great show it's a black show you you, i mean i don't everyone loves the show atlanta it's a black show with a centered around black people do you think more white people watch atlanta or insecure more white people maybe atlanta yeah why why are we doing these white people horror stories I think white people like to see it and be like, oh, I'm so happy that's not me. And um, stories, but to me, to me as a black woman who's not, who I'm not in close proximity to other white people, I'm like, that's not going to cross my mind. Like, I'm not going to, it's not on my brain. for listening we'll be back next week with another film and more opinions leave a review and tell us what you'd like for us to watch and let's keep the convo going on instagram you can find us at curry gumbo be well happy watching love y'all bye